Welcome everyone. This is a meeting of the Board of Selectmen. Today is January 9th, 2024. Is there a motion to call the meeting to order? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Gentlemen, the first order of business that we had was a couple of citations, number one and two on the new business, but I was asked to postpone due to a couple of individuals that have COVID-19 couldn't attend the citation ceremony, so we will postpone that and hopefully get it on the next Board of Selectmen's agenda. Um, the next one, third conservation agent, part-time health agent, um, resignation letter from Mr. Hannon to whom it may concern I am resigning my positions for the town of Lacushna effective 1230-23 Patrick Hannon um, thank you to Mr. Hannon for his service um, dedication to the town of Lacushna uh, your uh, expertise will be missed Mr. Hannon um, I wish you nothing but the best of luck in your future endeavors is there a motion uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to accept the resignation of part-time assistant health agent, part-time conservation agent, part-time stormwater agent, and for any and all other positions or offices with the town of Lacushnet dated December 29th, 2023, to memorialize for the record the acknowledgement and acceptance on behalf of the town of Lacushnet of those resignations by town council on that date, December 29th, 2023. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Next, we have number four, Council on Aging Management. Uh, Mr. Kelly has been working on uh, filling that position for the Council on Aging Director. Mr. Kelly, I'll turn it over to you to brief the board. All right. Uh, we've advertised in the MMA Bulletin and on the website indeed. Uh, as of the fifth, we had eight resumes. We have two more. Uh, we recommended some for interviews. The interview panel will be composed of Selectman Hinckley, myself, and COA Chair Linda Gilbo. The uh, panel has decided to interview three and hold two uh, in, in abeyance until we interview the three. The interviews are going to be conducted on the 11th. I am meeting with the COA board on the 10th to go over uh, the process and to get any recommendations or concerns they have and their input into the uh, questions that we will be asking. Very good. Mr. Warner, any questions, comments, concerns? Nope. Thank, thank you, Mr. Hinckley, for volunteering to do those interviews with Mr. Kelly. You're welcome. And thank Ms. Gilbo for her helping out in those. Uh, motion to place on file. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Mr. Kelly, what time do you have a timeline on when you think you'll be done with interviews? Uh, well, it depends if the three. Uh, any of the three are really good, uh, or there are two or three really good, then we'll, uh, we might interview a second time, but I am hoping that at the next meeting, we will be able to present to the board <coughs> for the board to interview. Okay, very good. Thank you. Next, we have a Russell Memorial Library disposition briefing. I have took a quick look at Mr. Kelly. I don't quite understand all the in-depth conversations around what this $25,000 earmark grant is. I guess we'll stop with that. All right. Uh, when we first started to look at this, uh, we found out that uh, the best way for the board to uh, divest its, uh, the town of the Russell Memorial Library is to do it in an RFP process. 
that would uh, entail a great deal of uh, legal expenses. So we approached the legislative delegation. They got us an earmark grant of $25,000 uh, that will be paid to Mass Development, which is a state agency that assists towns in doing this type of process. Uh, their consultant is Dream Development. They will be paying the $25,000 to Dream Development. They are also looking for a match of $10,000 from the town to do some of the legal work, prepare the plans, because we can't find a plan or a site plan that's accurate for the building. And we need a survey. After that, uh, that uh, the opera funding is available for that. I've given you a motion that can be made at some point concerning that. Dream Development has presented us with the scope of services you have, and Jen Thompson and I have met with Mr. Ben Murphy from the Vice President for Mass Development, which is a state associated agency, and uh, we have started to put together this plan. You would then be able to go out on an RFP and have people present the board with uh, ideas, concepts, proposals on the reuse uh, and sale of that property while preserving the architectural envelope. One of the things that I see in here, and I, I guess if that's the hoops, you got to jump through the dispose of a town-owned property, but on the development opportunities, I, I, I quickly read through this, and it's like zoning implications, participating in discussions on key development principles program, occupancy, additional placements, and how they relate to existing zoning. I mean, is that something that we care about? Yeah. Zoning? I mean, why would we want to start dealing with that? And it's not to change the zoning. It's uh, the implications of the present zoning. And mass development also, part of their charter from the state is they have to hold at least one community meeting to get input from the community. Yeah, just, that's fine. Just, I don't know. I think this, this would need to be looked at if the board so chooses to go this route. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I may, just a quick question. Sure. So, originally when this was brought up, we had talked about the $25,000 uh, as an earmark. Is that $25,000 earmark grant only given to us if we match with the $10,000? It's not given to us. It's uh, for us to use mass development. And the $10,000 is to fill in the gaps because we can't find a lot of the necessary records that they're asking for to pre prepare the RFP. We have the original deed, and, but we have no plans of the building in the building department or at the library, and well, yeah, unless it's in the old library. <laughs> and no plans uh, for the site plan. And when we go out to advertise, we're going to have to use that. I just don't feel comfortable with spending any more up on money without Slocum being a little bit more upfront with some progress. Um, we meet with uh, the next week. I think the 18th is the, the date, the something weeks. like that. Yeah, I think with it's the, the engineers. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I, Mr. Mr. Bob, I understand your, your point. We don't want to be like slowly uh, eroding the opera funds, which is dedicated to Slocum Street. Um, I, I guess I would contend that whoever we've hired as the consultant for this, you know, the engineer, the Slocum Street, we might have to take a little haircut. 
you know, as far as that fee goes. I just, you know, I, I think I look at this property and I've seen like when we did the Cusson property many, many moons ago, mm -hmm. it takes it, it takes some level of expertise to get it right. Yep. And, you know, I look at it as kind of an investment. I mean, s somebody may look at that property and say, well, that's not really used for something, but if we get some experts to look at it, it could be marketed as housing. It could be a coffee shop. It could be this. It could be that. You know, a professional office buildings. Who knows? Um, I just feel like I don't know that we've got the, no disrespect to Mr. Kelly, but I don't know if we've got the in-house expertise to come up with a game plan for that property uh, to market it the right way. Um, and so, you know, that, that's, that's my view of it. I think I, it I, an investment. I kind of looked at it in between both views is I thought we were just going to look at the property. We got town meeting approval to s dispose of it. We bring in an appraiser, take a look at the property, give us an appraisal on the property just for the sake of discussion right now. Half a million bucks. You put it out to bid for 525, minimum bid 525 or 500 grand or whatever. See what bids come in at and get rid of the property. I, I don't know how much time we're going to spend trying to figure out what the value of it is. I think the private market would determine that. Um, and just dispose of it that way. And I, I see through some of this stuff talking about, you know, looking at zoning and, and that's, if somebody buys that property and says, I want to make it law offices, I want to make it whatever it's not zoned for right now, I think that falls just outside the business village district, district by about 100 feet. Um, they go to zone a board of appeals, they want to convert it into something business related, you get a variance. Um, turn into business and you derive your revenue from that. Um, I, I'm, I'm kind of aligned with Mr. Hinkley when it comes to just, you know, throwing money around and the OPA money is 10 grand and, you know, we've been doing other things with OPA and that's supposed to be for infrastructure related things and you're just watching it just go slowly and ratcheting down. So uh, it's up to the board, but um, I, would, I would say is if there was money being spent from OPA, if that was to occur, when we make the sale of the property, can we reimburse that back? I'll find out from DOR. I think that's I think that's you know another way to look at it is if we're going to say we'll take it right now and we're going to go and we're going to grab ten grand if that's all that it's going to be is if it's ten grand from Apple, um, use ten thousand dollars from Apple. But if you make the sale of the property and again we'll go back to the same five hundred thousand dollar number, you take ten grand off the top and pop it back into Apple. So that we're back whole again. It's just borrowing feed Peter right now to pay Paul, but it'll come back to the Oppa fund. I think that's reasonable. Or I think that's we something. We might that even find that take that pro that proceeds and dump it into Slocum Street, you know, or it, that whole neighborhood. You know? It's something that you the know when you pipes, when you start looking at how you dispose of properties. Um, not that we do that very often, but it's something like that. I think there's a pretty good value to that property. I know I have a n number of people um, ask me about it. So there are plenty of people that are interested in that property, no matter what route we take. I just don't think we need, and I get all the logistics of the legal things and deeds and stuff like that, but if we have a deed, we know what it is. It's just like selling any other property. Maybe you just... Deed and a survey. A thousand bucks for survey. I, I, instead of getting too in-depth and involved with spending money, I mean, I guess <coughs> the earmark is 25 grand at somebody's willing to give to it it's a state maybe mm -hmm. just go back and say we don't have this the the match and see you know we can get the money we get the money uh, well it, part of it is for you folks to have control of it architecturally i think you i think you just do that through the sale right it's got a it's got a historical um his, historical preservation on the facade of the building and, and put that inside the bid and have that drawn up and say have a nice day i mean i know i know I've been inquired about that property for a law, exactly what we said, a law office, and then I've had somebody else say, I'd like to turn it into apartments. And if somebody wants to come in and buy that thing for six, seven hundred thousand dollars and spend another four, five, six hundred thousand dollars and make an investment in it and do that, so be it. It's just like any other property in the town. It's, it's, no matter it, where we are, it, if it's it, not municipal property, as right? You, as you, I'm not advocating for this method, but as you said, I, I don't have the expertise to do all the legalese to make sure that it's architecturally kept. 
mass development and their consultant does. Do you want to use the 25000 from the state to do that, or do you want to spend money out of our legal expenses and have KP do it? No, I don't, you know, I, I, again, I, I don't know what it would cost. I, we haven't got an estimate from KP on what it would be to write something like this up. Um, you know, I'm not, I know it's probably not less than $5,000, right? So, I mean, if we can, I think Dave's point is, is a well-made point. Let's get go back to the state, revisit it, and say, you know what? Towns and the Board of Selectmen aren't comfortable using ten grand out of Apple money, and let's see what happens with the EMI money. Say, you still, we still able to get the 25,000 bucks for the earmark money and if we could do that it's a it's a no-brainer right there's no ties to the grant if that's the case let's do it that way and in the so, meantime check with the EMR to see, see if, if we can if reimburse, we can't reimburse yep. the funds. yeah and then you could also do that at the same time as the Kelly yeah. will bring it back to the next meeting and right. if you think you can nail it down by then I hope so okay boss let's do that no action necessary on that for now no nope. All right, moving on. Police detail billing. This is something that was asked for from the accounting's office and Mr. Kelly. So, Mr. Kelly, I will turn this over to you. Uh, there has been uh, some delay in sending out the billing on police details, and the accountant's office, in reviewing it, has put together a uh, proposal for a process while we develop an actual policy where the, uh, and to ensure timely billing, uh, we have to send out within two weeks of the uh, detail being performed, the police department will have to send out a bill to, to the vendor. And hopefully we'll get it back within 30 days rather than wait three months. Yeah, I agree, because in this footnote, it says the town shouldn't have to foot over $100,000 in detailed expense because our building isn't sent out for six months at a time. So I, if that's what we need is a policy. Oh, well, we're going to put the process in, and then we're going to put... We're right now reviewing all of the financial policies. The new uh, treasurer collector, the new town accountant, myself, and the assistant treasurer collector yeah. and we're going to present it to the board as a package but in the interim we're going to we want the board to acknowledge that this poli uh, this process should go in place yeah i mean i don't think we need to wait for a policy to come in place i think that if you know i i'm, I'm quite honestly i don't understand why it's being held up for so long so if you need the board to make a motion to uh, have the uh, folks responsible for submitting detailed billing to the town account in, in a more expeditious way I think after 30 days is reasonable right whatever you get in the past 30 days you send out those buildings and we should be reimbursed within the next 30 days correct so if that's what you need is there a motion to that effect so moved second all those in favor aye and um, if your financial policies are too big and complicated, let's not put it all as one. Because some of us like to read very thoroughly. There you go. So that, let's maybe we do it in segments. All right. right. So let's take the most important things and put it out. Because, you it's know. It's going to take us 60 days, we figured, to actually find out what's here. Because some of the policies that we've seen that the uh, board, the town was operating under our 1990. I'm sure a lot of them are outdated. Um, so while we have the folks in place, let's just, uh, that's why I'm saying if we can just draft policies as we go, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, so we're not spending too much time in one meeting just discussing financial policies, we can break it out into segments, right? All right. If there's eight of them, give us a couple at a time. It makes it easier for the board to review it, make sure we're catching everything and we understand what we're approving instead of 100 pages of hoopla that I have to sit down and read over a weekend. Well, so to be considerate to myself and the board, let's break it up into segments. Multiply eight by four. <laughs> okay, well, I don't want to look at 32 if that's what you're asking me to do. At once. No. <laughs> Correct. So we'll figure it out. 
All right, off to the uh, next one. We got a couple of them that are kind of coincide with each other. We put them as two separate ones, seven and eight, fiscal year 25 revenue, fiscal 25 budget. Right now we'll deal with revenue, Mr. Kelly. All right, as far as revenue goes, the financial staff was very conservative in their revenue estimates. And I'm glad we were because uh, in the middle of this, you know, very shortly uh, or in the very immediate past, the governor has issued 9C cuts for this year's budget in the amount of close to $400 million. Uh, we're checking to see if it affects any of us. It doesn't affect state aid. But that doesn't bode well for next year. Um, so 9C funding, the only thing that I can think of that impacts is Council on Aging. That I think would, some of the grants and things of the like that we will utilize it from there. Well, possibly. But might, uh, might uh, yeah, but that's the only thing I can think of. So. Yeah, not right now. We're just hoping that there's not a second round of 9C cuts. Correct. But uh, when we, it's revenue estimates standard on what the new estimate was for two and a half, that's just mathematical. Uh, as far as new growth goes, we're estimating $100,000, which is half of last year mm -hmm. and a quarter of a number of past years. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have very few permits issued that are going to come online, so uh, it's mainly driven by the economy, and that's a problem. Uh, the, as you can see, we still leave the unused levy capacity of 120,000. Mm -hmm. uh, Paired fifty thousand out of the overlay allowance because we don't. From what we see in the excess overlay, we don't think it's needed. What what line are you on now? Uh, ten. Traditionally, it's, it's, you're pretty much right in line with what we did for 24, though, right? Well, traditionally, we come in at 250, and then we have to refine it. Yeah, and you just you plugged in 200, so yep. it's just a negative 1,072. It's well, no, it's actually because uh, the that's the actual figures you're looking at versus what the estimate was originally for 24. I. Uh, I get what that number was. We talked about that $60,000 shortfall, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. And then uh, as far as the cherry sheets go, uh, we did a 3% increase for 70, Chapter 70, and for UGGA. Can, I, can, we, can we talk about that one real quick? Yeah. <laughs> so... We talked about this during the tax, well, at least I did with you, the tax classification, right? And last year, the governor threw an extra $700,000 in state aid, which is out of the millionaire's tax, right? And I talked about me not agreeing with that model. But neither here or there, it's there. And then, and then I'm looking at this year, you're looking at, you're increasing that 215, 110. And historically, before that, big jumbo move by the new governor of seven hundred thousand dollars historically chapter 70 grows by roughly eighty thousand dollars a year so i just wrote on the side of that number you're being very ambitious uh the administration in their uh hearings so far have been citing three percent whether they come to that now in the 9c after the 9c cuts but uh, the governor is supposed to have House 1 issued by uh, the January 20th. You think that number will be locked in then by January? Well, well it'll, be say the February. it'll be the governor's number, and by traditionally the, the governor's number is uh, at least... Yep, to the house. I get it. I'm just saying it's a very ambitious number compared to um, historical. Yeah, well, <coughs> I agree that uh, it's... 
uh, something that you've got to wait for House One on, and this this is a moving target, as you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the rest are fairly standard. Uh, where we're also looking at some problems is down in local receipts. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've decreased uh, motor vehicle by 50,000. Why? People aren't buying new cars. It's but the we excise have, we, tax. I, I understand what it is, um, but we've been using 1.35 for, I don't know, I don't want to say a decade, but a long time now, plus the $100,000 that we use for road paving, so that 1350 for regular budgetary reasons and in the hundred for road pavement puts us at 1.45 and we last year we collected in one point we'll just call it 1.65 and I know that it's a six year sliding scale and that's why I said we'll hold off you can't go all the way up to the max on excise because when that depreciation Correct. sets in right and we don't know as you just alluded to people aren't buying as many new cars the economy shifting interest rates are high I don't know if there's a reason to it's a moving target. slice and dice that number, that's all. The moving target. Yep. Uh, we left the 100000 for paving. Uh, most of the other numbers I'm comfortable with. I'm curious as to the investment income number. I was very conservative in that in view of how we've reinvested the uh, town money since the new treasurer co collector group has come <coughs> on in the last year and a half. I think that, so that, that um, interest is not derived from stabilization in OPEB accounts and things of the, of the like. It's, it's basically out of the general fund, correct? And I think there's some absorption, and the reason why that um, interest has gone up so high is based on um, the Apple money that's sitting inside of an account. Well, it's also that we have uh, better interest rates renegotiated with uh, and moved money out mm -hmm. of some of the banks that were giving us nothing uh, and, and capping, uh, capping the interest. Uh, at a very low figure. Hmm. I get it. It's it's a reasonable number to plug for now. Uh, and uh, you can see I've been conservative in licenses and permits by a, about twenty five thousand. I'd rather be conservative now and then come back to you and say I was wrong. I don't think you'll be that far off, Mr. Kelly, based on where we had that discussion as well, right? Yeah. As of late November, we were at like $120,000, but one permit was $40,000 of that, $120,000, mm -hmm. so a third of that, that you won't see reoccurring next year. Right. So <clears throat> I don't think you're far off on that estimate. So uh, you want to get to the budget busters? Yeah. <laughs> I do. So, you know, that's that's where you're at at revenue. <clears throat> now we get to the old fiscal year 25 budget. And you can just basically go right down that list. Uh, the retirement, uh, Bristol County retirement, we have that figure at, it's changed since uh, because I asked for an updated figure, it's a hundred and seven thousand and uh, just hundred and seven thousand seven oh four. So it's about uh, ten thousand more. Health insurance sets an estimate. Uh, Pretty good one though. Yeah. Uh, general insurance, the same thing. If we decide through town meeting to, last year we took 100,000 and put, when we joined the Mass Strategic Health Group, and put that in ours, the town of Akushnet Reserve Fund there. Mm -hmm. 
if we, I had discussions with Mass Strategic Health Group, if we were to put 50,000 this year, we'd decrease our uh, total insurance increase to somewhere, uh, we would reduce it by 50 to 55,000. So almost, so better than a 50% reduction in an overall cost, increased cost, just by putting 50 into our own bank? Into our own reserve. And now we, we do it from free cash, right? So. So that's pending. Of course, that's if there are <coughs> no catastrophic cases coming in. Mm -hmm. Old Colony at 200,000 is a placeholder for because of the increase in the number of individuals from a Kushnet that are availing themselves of the uh, Old Colony for a Vocation Technical Education. It is becoming the town's high school. It is increasing substantially the number of people going there. Uh, we'll have a refined figure in two weeks, so most likely by the next meeting. Presumably tuition to like Fairhaven and New Bedford is, right? Usually that was the tuition. Well, uh, I'm saying, but theoretically that, that tuition number should be dropping. We right? have to watch the school budget because if you remember the tuition to Fairhaven is included in the bottom line budget of the school department. Right. And now it's a $200,000 number, right? So, Old Colony is roughly 15, a little better than 15,000 per student in Fave, and I think New Bedford is somewhere around the 11, 12,000 dollar number tuition. So, I mean, you've got to figure out the math, right? Depending on whether, because that's 10 students, it's 150, so you're only like, you're only talking 13 students to get to that 200,000 dollar increase, but. If, if it's more, then that's how this number comes out to only be 200000 right? Because of the difference between Fahaven's tuition, let's just call it Fahaven's tuition, New Bedford's tuition, if it's twelve and Old Colony's 15, there's a difference of $3,000. That's a real expense that you're transferring. We'll have that discussion, I guess, with Old Colony. Well, once Old Colony comes in with their figure, because remember, it's for tuition of the past year, then we have to meet with the school and see if they're going to decrease there. And when I get to the next numbers, we'll not talk about that. Uh, the school COLA, uh, which is the salary increases, uh, we have an approximate figure from the school of 300,000. That seems conservative. Uh, the total uh, COLA from the uh, town is, uh, other than the police, is uh, the police is 275 and the rest of the town is approximately 75 or 80. So we're looking at around 350. Yeah, the, um, I see, I see, uh, a little note with a little style alongside of it because the 275 is really not 275, right? Because then you have overtime, and that's what that little style is notating to. So yeah, 275 is probably an additional 50 to 75 with OT based on previous. That would be the overtime line that we have to analyze. Yes. It's still an impact to budget buses, right? Yep. So you're talking more like 350 versus the 275 police only. Yeah, but it wouldn't be in the call, it would be in the overtime line. But yes. It's part of a budget. Yes. That's all I'm saying. Oh yeah. So just it's a, just more of a hit. Yeah, it's, well that's not why that you, I want to add any more pins that's why pain you I get, already see here, but that's why you get the footnote there. Mm hmm Uh and uh the real budget buster as far as the schools go is they're renegotiating the bus contract. And it's a, an expected increase could be as high as four hundred thousand dollars. Wow! Yeah, that's a killer. Yep. 
I mean, you're talking 700k, even though you're, I believe school coal is conservative at 300. Yeah. Because I know the salaries there are roughly 10 million, let alone steps. You're, you're talking 700 grand yeah. alone. Yep. Oof. Go ahead. And utilities are, uh, which includes heat, is about a hundred thousand. Elections, because it's that utility, Jamie. That utility for everybody to understand what that utility is is it's it's not because we're using more energy. It's because of the rate change and the energy Correct. aggregation that we have entered into. Some I did it years ago with Mr. Catino. I think we got into the involved in that like twelve or thirteen. If we didn't have the... Uh, the rate's gone from like 9 to like 16, right? Yeah. But That's that impact. But if we didn't have that and we went with the straight Eversource rate, the uh, increase would be about 150. You got it. I understand. I just, for people at all listening to the briefing that we're getting, you know, we're not using more air conditioning, we're not using more heat, it's basically the same, same old, same old, it's the impact from the increase in energy costs is Correct. what it comes down to. We have no control. Uh, that's why they're budget busters. Hmm. And elections, we have an increase from the town clerk of 40,000 because it's a presidential election year and we've got a lot more elections and we have to do the mail-in and early election which means we have to staff it bottom line is uh, we have a structural deficit in the budget right now with no other increases and no decreases in cuts of uh, somewhere around 825 to 825,000 to 835,000. <clears throat> That's if your ambitious number with state aid comes in 3% above. If it comes in like previous historical averages, that's another 120, right? And yep. then the overtime for police, once we do that calculation, is another two, another. 50, 75, it's like another two million, over a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And that's before we start to work on the budget. <coughs> now we're looking at uh, town side cuts between 300 and 400,000 if there's no other income, and school side between 500 and 600,000. That's the way the pie is split, right? We'll, well, have to, um, we'll have to see once we get going. Finance committee's got a lot of work to do this year. Board of Selectmen, I'm sure, are gonna have to obviously give their input, right? Because we'll see what cuts are really necessary once we figure out what revenue really is, right? And then it's up to the board to figure out where we wanna make cuts. It's not a rosy year. It never is, but this one's a pretty bad one. Yeah. We'll see how it goes. I know. We'll figure it out some way, somehow. I we, have, always, we always manage to figure it out. We'll I've put together a preliminary list of recommended cuts from the town side that I would give to the board, and including the insurance uh, thing about the 50000 and I've gotten to about 225000 I think the insurance thing is a no-brainer, right? You, we thank God we, we have some money left on the table of free cash, and I think taking $50,000 and putting it in your own bank account in order to save 45 on the other side, 55, whatever number it's going to be, it, it's a no-brainer. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. Why wouldn't you do it? I'm that's, surprised. A, that's a fool's game not to do it, right? I'm surprised more towns don't. government we'll figure it out so um, with that all said I'm sorry is it executive session is that where you're at I don't have the agenda in front of me I know you said that was coming up yeah we have a town administrator's report but before I move on to that uh, just the Hinkley do you have anything over the revenues and budget discussion for now for now no Mr. Lona Anything, any questions, comments, concerns? No, I just think if I do have any comment, 
it's I think this is an opportunity for us to examine our current practices. You know, I point out the uh, the solar farm revenue, which I think has been a really good move, um, which is you know putting that money, fencing that money off, and putting it into capital expenditures. Um, but you know, with I think we've got five potential projects already on the in the pipeline, close to approval. That might be a time to look at a pilot, which is you know for people who don't understand what that is, is that you're essentially same in lieu of taxes. Right. It's a fixed payment, a fixed tax payment over the course of the project, which with solar it it starts out high and then depreciates. <coughs> That's why Mr. Gasper, we always said we don't want to build a budget based on solar revenue because you have it it's it's really flush one day and then it's not there the next but if we were able to do some pilots which you have a fixed revenue source over the course of 20 years that we can count on then I think that might be something to consider again I know this might not be the most um, uh, politically uh, uh, safe thing to say, but you know, municipalities in the area have a, a, a meals tax, and everybody, everybody around us does. And I've talked to a, a number of operators who said, "Geez, you know, if it helps the town, they're fine with it." And you know, obviously, we'd have to have some outreach and discussion about that. But I think there's opportunities um, to generate some revenue in a different way. Um, and you know, if it's a, if it's an issue of making sure that we're maintaining core services. And I think we have to look at that type of stuff, and I'll, I'll take the political heat for those decisions. Um, I think, I, Mr. Mona, I, I don't know if anybody has to take political heat. As you know, we this was something that was discussed. Uh, it was brought to town meeting. Um, it was killed on town meeting floor. I, I was not in favor of the meals tax five or six, seven years ago, whatever it may, may have been long ago. Um, I think you're right. I mean, now at this point where you, you say, do you bring in um, everywhere else I go, as you said, I'm paying a meal tax, right? I look at the bills, um, there's a meal tax on it. If this, if that's something that the board wants to entertain, why not put it on town meeting and let town meeting have an opportunity to vote it up or down again? And I think that's, you know, if you're at this point where you're sitting at a, let's call it a million dollar deficit, mm -hmm. I think back then, I don't know what meal tax was, it might have been 50, 60, 70,000 bucks somewhere around here, whatever it is. I, I think it puts a dent in the equation. And as far as pilots go, Selectman Luna, um, the only thing I would say to that, because that legislation was created, right? I was, I was a huge part of creating that legislation. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we all we need to do is make sure that our commitment to the taxpayers when we did the school roof that we'll be talking about the next meeting, right? The, um, the band. The band, long band, mm -hmm. right? Not the band you're in, Mr. Angley, band. Um, so as long as we can cover those costs for that school roof from the previous solar revenue, and I think you're right, again, looking forward, um, whatever ones do get approval for solar farms, um, take that money and do it over to whatever those agreements going to be, 25 years, whatever it is, and you know, if you, if you get 100 grand a year and helps it out a little bit, whatever it is, the 100 grand, if it's 20, thousand dollars a solar field for 25 years if it's 30 grand whatever that pilot will come out to it it fluctuates based on kilowatts and all that Mickey Mouse stuff that ratio but I think it's um, everything helps at this point right yeah. unfortunately it's it's, it's like it's not a good picture for anybody right um, pandemics created a lot of problems in in society um, in everybody's business model whether you're a municipality or not right and the biggest cost is looking at what I've been looking at for all these years is, you know, salaries and health care costs, right? You're looking at the town, town-wide is 15 plus million dollars in salaries, right? Take a number and put it on that 15 and those are your fixed costs. You're, you're just in salary increases alone based on normalized COLAs, you've absorbed all your Prop 2 and a half levy increase plus yeah. town-wide. 500,000 plus for two and a half with no growth. It's That's what I'm saying. It's just it, you're, you just absorbed all your money and, and if you look at budgets, I've been doing this for, for a long time. I was a FinCon member for five years. I mean, you know, we, we basically take and that's why it's gonna be a tough tough time for, for FinCon, right? We'll see what we can get for cooperation out of the schools and Old Colony needs to sharpen their pencils as well and 
you know, see what we can come up with with what everybody um, participating in the budget process. We'll see where we end up, but it's um, we're at a we're at a point where you, know, you just don't have the revenues to to can keep business as usual, right? And I think that's why being creative with pilots and um, the meal stacks thing might be you know might be an appetite for that now, right? And. Uh this year, because of what's happening on the state level, as well as what we're looking at, some of the expenses, is, is a very tough year. Next year, even if the state uh, puts their increases at 2%, you'll be able to uh, weather it a lot better next year than this year. It's just you've had a, a confluence of a number of expenses coming all at once. I don't know how much prettier next year is going to be. Um, you know, you spend the money this year, it's going to be spent again next year. That's the problem. It's just, it's just a vicious circle when you start getting into pensions, health care, all your cost of living adjustments. Private industry is getting no increases. Very little increases. The only places that are getting them are the unionized places. And we've already been told we aren't going to see one. Well, you know, and that's I, you know, reality is when we when we start negotiating the contracts, we got to start looking. Do we go to a four hundred one k? Most industry has done away with all their pensions. There's no pensions out there. Correct. So you have to make it attractive. So you, I get that. So that you can attract people here. Reality is reality. At some point, we're going to get to the point where we can't afford any of it. Yep, I agree. I've I don't want to be sitting in your seat. I've <laughs> talked. I've talked about pension reform for quite some time, right? And it was just trying to get ahead of the curve, right? Because it's not sustainable. And I've been talking about that for two decades. How it's not sustainable. It's and you're not right. Getting now, ahead of the curve. The reality of it is, in private industries, big corporations, Johnson and Johnson, which is what a, form, a former employee of mine, um, Verizon. Um, Eversource, they've all done away with all of that stuff. There's, it doesn't exist anymore. They, they started 401ks where you do a match. And, and that's more in line with what most government agencies should be doing. But, you know, try to get it done because the problem with all of that, and I'll say it right out live and right on live TV right now, it's all the politicians are involved with the pension system. So why would they want to shoot themselves in the foot, right? Sooner or later, the people have to do something about that, right? So we'll see where it's going to go. I'm not saying I, I want to kill pensions. I'm not saying that, but I think you've got to start looking forward and saying, "Hey, you know what? People that are in it are in it. Moving forward, this is the new system. Have a nice day." Well, what what private industry? A couple places that I were. What they did is they stopped it as of this date. Your contributions into it end on this date, and then after that, the 401k kicks in. Mm -hmm. And just as an example, there was a company in the industrial park. I'm not going to mention it, their name. The I was talking to the, the owner of the company at a, a Christmas party. The first year, his business owned one million in pension in, to the pension fund. That was their contribution. The second year, it was two million. The third year it was four million. The next year, it was eight. Million. And they, he says, "I can't. You can't sustain it." And that's why a lot of the companies got, did away with them. Of course, because you're going to go out of business. You're going to go out of business. You yeah. can only raise your prices so much That's when right. you're in private industry, right. right? Just like, you know, Miss Bowles, everybody thinks the money's in infinity and beyond. It's not, right? right? You're going to bankrupt the people. Right. So, eh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a conversation I think that everybody needs to have. I, I'm kind of exhausted from that conversation because, you know, sooner or later people will want to listen to it, but not well, right now. I have no choice because the money's just not going to be there. I mean, the town is going to get to this point where the funds are not there, period. You know, you can beat everybody up, but, it's, it, you know, people are going to start defaulting on their taxes and everything else. I mean, I'm yeah. sure they see a lot of it now. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on, town administrator's report. You got anything, Mr. Kelly? Uh, quickly brief the board on it, so we're getting... Um, you, you got a quick memo that was put together concerning available dates for town meeting. Uh, I've met with the town clerk and I've met with the moderator and we've talked to the schools. Uh, the fact that this is a presidential primary election year and then you have town elections and where Memorial Day, Patriots Day, etc. fall, 
The possible town meeting dates are April 22nd, April 29th, and June 3rd. The moderator and the town clerk both have uh, voiced uh, their preference <coughs> at June 3rd. And it's up to the board to set. The board doesn't have to do it yeah. now. I just want the board to know. Uh, we are I'm meeting with FinCom tomorrow night. They're going to go over their schedule so we can see how their schedule fits in that. And then we can also look at the board schedule as far as having their budget hearings. But uh, the problem is on some of those elections, not only uh, is it a problem with the clerk's office, but you can't hold hearings or uh, meetings on presidential primary election day. Yeah, of course. Yep. We'll figure it out. Uh, so it, I just wanted to get ahead of the curve and let the board know on that uh, where we're at because uh, it's one of those weird years that you've got different dates for holidays, including Patriots Day. Is that what the presidential primary is? Tuesday, March 5th? Yep. yep. And Patriots Day is on tax day, so the tax day is postponed for Massachusetts. <laughs> tax day. April. 15th. Every day's tax day. Very <laughs> true. <laughs> All right. Yeah. What else you got? Anything? Uh, that's all I've got. You've got the individual memos, and you've got my report on the COA. Yeah. Uh, we have started interviews with the assistant town accountant, but. Uh, it was just preliminary interviews to talk to a couple people. Uh, they actually, it turned out, had uh, very limited or no skill sets that we need. We thought that, but we wanted to make sure before we eliminated them. And uh, it's, we might have to go out and advertise again because what we're getting in is, it looks like it's, uh, from the <coughs> unemployment office, you've got to, to put six uh, applications in so you keep your unemployment. Just remember the comment that we I had back with the last, though, with all the open positions, right, is with the MMA, it, it's where a lot of people in municipal government look for jobs. It runs for 30 days. So on the 31st day, that's when you re-advertise, so you're back at the top of the list, right? So, yeah, you know, it's what, 30 bucks? Who cares about the $30? You're saving all this money by not filling a position. Just <clears throat> let that thing run, but keep us fresh on the bulletin board instead of sitting down below where nobody can see us. There's uh, over 18 finance positions advertised right now. Yeah, I know I keep an eye on it all the time. So if you're a young college student, yeah, municipal government. It's a job. Yep. Yep. Uh, I guess it's time for selectman announcements. Mr. Inkley? Mr. Chairman, just want to give a quick shout out to the DPW. Uh, driving around all the surrounding communities, it looks like the snowstorm caught a lot of uh, sleeping happening. And uh, I went by in the middle of the storm to the DPW to check in on Dan. I brought him a coffee. And uh, said call me if you need me and I woke up and we had clean streets so I thought I just want a big shout out to what he did and he, he handled the town well thanks for stealing my thunder <laughs> but anyways yeah, yeah. I just I just want I just want to yeah. hit back I'm, I'm just going to hit back on on what Mr. Inkley just said you know um, considering we had a lot of new subcontractors this year I know that I spoke with Mr. Menard on uh, the following day I think it was Monday morning of the storm um, you know we got a little bit behind on some of the main roads but they cleared right up towards the end of the night so I was I was happy about that and I think there was a couple of complaints about a couple of streets that haven't been hadn't been plowed 
um, and it's only because of those new drivers, the subcontractors that we hire, they were confused in the routes where thing, one route ends here and the other route ends there. It's like one or two streets. So please just be patient. Um, always make sure you call in the DPW to, to let them know that your road has been plowed. But outside of that, I, I wanna thank all of our subcontractors that signed on board and our DPW staff, because um, it was a great job. And also our maintenance guy, um, Dave, that quickly learned how to use the plow truck. Yep. Um, I stopped by the library when he was there on my way in from doing some plowing myself. Um, and I seen him over there, so I went out and helped him out do a little bit of cleaning up of the library parking lot. But Dave did a great job with the library parking lot. I was um, very pleased to see how well he operated the truck in the town hall and Potting Ways building. So um, we got lucky with Dave picking up on the plow and yep. pretty, pretty quickly. Um, he seemed to be pretty content with what he was doing, so I was happy and proud of Dave, uh, our maintenance guy, for doing that as well. Um, I don't have anything else on the selectman's announcements other than Happy New Year to everybody, and uh, may it be a healthy and prosperous New Year for everybody. A couple, couple things. One, what I understand today is uh, National Police Recognition Day, um, and want to recognize our police officers uh, over the holidays. Uh, our police officers were uh, under a great deal of duress and to continue to be with the incident that took place with Haven. Um, and so I just want to let them know that we're thinking of them and thank you for your service. Um, on another note, Mr. Hinckley, I know you've been involved, Mr. Gasper, um, there was an article in the New Bedford Light about um, nitrogen in the uh, cleanup and septic tanks. We got a letter from Senator Montigny and the Buzzards Bay Coalition essentially saying that that article is wrong. And uh, the letter, go on, but uh, Senator Montigny immediately got on top of this and just saying we're writing to ask that the board take note and informs residents of the town of uh, the town corrections and clarifications made today by the New Bedford Light newspaper during regarding the establishment of a nitrogen pollution cleanup plan, aka total maximum load or TMDL plan for New Bedford and the Christian River. The article originally published erroneously suggested that adoption of a TMDL for the Akushnet River would result in homeowners in Akushnet being required to upgrade their septic systems to expensive nitrogen reducing systems. This is not and never was true. We urge the, the light to correct the story today. A new, and a new version of the article has uh, appeared. So um, that's, that's the latest. So that article appeared to have some misinformation, um, but I do know, when you go through a little fire drill like this, I know the Buzzards Bay Coalition is on notice. Senator Montigny is, is working hard and he's, you know, will work tooth and nail to make sure that the town residents are not forced to do something by regulation. Absolutely. All right. Uh, Mr. Yeah, one more thing that I forgot to bring up too. Uh, just a quick thank you and congratulations to Chief Parland. Uh, he was able to share a couple of grants to help out his crew. I uh, got a thousand dollar grant to put towards ADs in town hall, and he also got a twenty, roughly twenty three hundred dollar grant uh, to replace the iPads and the ambulances uh, for reporting and information tracking. So thanks, Chief Farland, for always looking for open grant money and better in your department. Great job. Kudos. All right. With no other business, tell me all set. With no other business in open session, we do have a couple of agenda items for executive session under General Law, Chapter 38, Subsection 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining on litigation development. Development inspectional services of an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining and litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares the board will not return to public session. And at the conclusion of the executive session, and two, the executive session of the general law, chapter 30A, subsection 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation, MOA, matter poison, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining and litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares that the board will not return to public session at the conclusion of the executive session. Is there a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Yes. 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 Roll call vote, Mr. Hinckley? Yes. Mr. Wona. Yes. And I am a yes. We are now in executive session. <laughs>